Hi friends, so I'm finally back with another video and I'm so excited. Thank you so much for your patience with me. And if you're new here, my name is Ebony. I'm a furniture artist and I specialize in taking neglected pieces of furniture and turning them into something beautiful. So I actually got this dresser for free on Facebook Marketplace and I was very excited because you guys know free is my favorite word and it was interesting because I actually got this from a fellow flipper here in California and it was funny because I just sold her something for five dollars a few weeks ago because I was getting rid of some furniture and now she's doing the same thing and so she posted this one for free and I snatched it up and I'm so excited. So the first thing I like to do is clean all of my furniture pieces. Today I'll be using a TSP substitute and I like to use this because you don't have to rinse it back and it's really going to save you a lot of time. So for Christmas, I asked for a shop vac and my dad came through with this one and I was super excited because I wanted to try the whole dust free sanding experience. So I went down to Lowe's and I purchased this coupler. I bought the two inch by an inch and a half. Now those measurements are a bit larger than the standard size holes, but I made it work. It wasn't difficult at all. The only thing you have to do is just tighten the screw and then it will fit nice and snug. So just a few things that I wanted to mention. Number one is that you're going to hear a lot more noise, being that now you have both the electric sander and the shop vac working at the same time. Number two is that the sander became very difficult to maneuver. I did not have the same control. It was heavy, my hands started to hurt at times. So that's something to consider as well. And then the last thing I wanted to say is that I kept getting shocked. Throughout this entire process, there was just this random shock that would take place. Um, was very suspenseful and very painful at the same time to the point where I almost dropped the sander a couple of times and the first time it happened I was really just thrown off guard so I looked it up to see what was causing it and there was a scientific explanation for it all so some of the <laughs> some of the solutions that I found one was having something to do with copper wire and then the other was to buy a shock-free vacuum hose now, I definitely like the second option better, but it ranges between $50 and up. So that's something to consider as well. I will try out the duct tape method, but I don't know if that will play a role in the shock happening or not, but it's definitely worth a try. And I just wanted to give you guys like a forewarning. So there's that. But I will say the dust was down to a minimum. Actually, it was like non-existent. So that was great. Okay, so it's bright and early the next morning and it's really cold outside, so I didn't wanna open the garage. So please excuse the lighting, but I'm going in with my Sedona Red wood stain and I applied two coats all over and this was in a matter of two days or so. I like to wait overnight to let my stain fully dry. So just keep that in mind. And then also I probably could have gotten away with doing a third coat of stain because I definitely wanted this to be very rich in its color. And it was okay, but it could have been even more, just it could have had a deeper color to it. So that's what I would have done differently if anything, but it still looks very nice. And I just want you to know, I did not use a pre-stain conditioner. I don't think it's necessary when you're dealing with oak. And if I'm correct, this is oak, um, but I believe that's what I researched. So I didn't use that and that's just the way I ended up doing it. And it worked out well for me.
Okay, so now I'm just going to seal in my wood stain using this oil-based wipe-on poly by Minwax and a lint-free cloth. Okay, so I ordered these legs on Amazon and mistakenly I ordered the ones that have like a, a peg that needs to be inserted into the bottom of your furniture versus buying the ones that you just kind of screw the peg onto the corner and just like twist the leg in. So it's okay, we're just going to figure it out. There's just one extra step that we have to take. And for that, I'm going to use this, um, this drill piece right here. <laughs> so I got this from my dad because I didn't actually have anything like this. Um, and it just kind of drills a bigger hole for you. However, this one is a little bit too big, so I would encourage you to get the size that you need and test it out on a, a piece of scrap wood first. I believe this is a 5 8 of an inch, so get something smaller than that. Um, but what you're gonna do is, at least what I did was I measured an inch and a half from the left and an inch and a half from the top. Now just be sure to measure twice and, and drill once because I definitely had to make a correction on my measurements. Um, but once you have that measured out, you're just gonna drill your hole. So like I said, my drill connector piece was a little bit too big and it was going to kind of cut into the holes that I needed to attach my screws to. So luckily I caught it in time. But what I ended up doing for the remainder of the legs is I just used a fat drill bit and I just kind of wiggled it around to kind of just carve out the hole. So that works too. Whatever floats your boat, just make sure you get everything in there and nice and secure. Okay, so moving right along to the painting process, I actually have a lot to share, so bear with me. Um, but I'm gonna start by testing out the paint on the back of the dresser. So once that's all good, I'm just going to go ahead and start painting the legs. Now, I'm actually using a new paint today. And I told you guys in my last video, I found a paint that I loved. It was Evo by Gemini, and it was all good. However, it's now on back order. And so my paint guy, he gave me a competitor product. He said, just try this one out. You know, sorry, I, I didn't mean to set you up to fail for the last product. So here, try this gallon of paint on the house and tell me what you think. So, guy came through yet again, and I'm not surprised, <laughs> but this is actually Exalta. Now, I asked him a few questions about it. I wanted to know if primer was necessary. He said it was not, just make sure to do two coats. Now, I will say I had every intention to prime this dresser, but I think I was just so excited that I completely forgot. I had been doing other things throughout the last week. I haven't been able to work on my stuff and so now that I was able to get back to it I was just like so excited I ran outside and I, I just got started <laughs> now I kept that in the back of my mind what he had said about not using primer but I still wanted to use primer anyway but it works out because it's a dark color so we're not worried about any bleed through or anything like that it's just an extra step that I like to take just a preference thing for me so one thing about this paint that I think you should know is that it's almost like opaque, if you will. Like, I know it's a dark color. It's it's just, you're gonna see the wood grain is what I'm trying to say. So it depends on your preference. I think it looks kind of cool, especially on this dresser. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then also I got this in a flat sheen because like I told you guys in the last video, I wasn't a fan of that high gloss look, even though I was using a satin paint, it was just extra glossy from what I was used to. Now I know it was a different product and everything, but I had already had my mind made up that I wanted to try flat paint. And since he didn't have the one in stock, I still wanted to try flat paint with this one. So there's that. Um, I believe this runs about in the $60 range. And um, 
make sure you sand in between your coats so i use a 320 grit sandpaper to do my sanding and it dries really really quick so it dries to the touch just in about maybe 10 15 minutes and then he told me that i should just let it cure for a week and he said that this paint is actually even more durable than the evil by gemini and then the last thing to know is that this paint is only compatible with a paint sprayer it's not compatible with a brush That's next level, baby. Say it again. See me, baby. You see me, baby. <laughs> you said what? Really, baby. It's next level, baby. You like it? <laughs> All right, and the last thing we're gonna do is attach our hardware. And I got this on Amazon. And I will say, if you're interested in getting this, just know that it's not as gold as it looks in the picture. So when I got it, um, it was a little bit more of a bronzy golden shade. It, you might not be able to tell from my clips here, but just keep that in mind. And then um, I will definitely try and link the hardware down below for you guys as well. Okay, so if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. And if you have not had a chance to do so already, please be sure to check out my last video. And also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And hold on to your subscription because I have some amazing flips upcoming that I just cannot wait. I'm so excited. And with that being said, I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in my next video.